music, R&B, hip hop, pop, I still get reggae, EDM, indie, old school, and sports talk, right here, worldstarhitradio.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is, I'm Jacqueline Waller, and this is Chris. Greg Alunis with Azul Motorsports. <laughs> Thank you, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. So uh, we are on Connecting Atlanta Radio, hosted on the one and only World Star Hit Radio uh, dot com station, the fastest growing internet radio station in Atlanta. And we are excited to have Chris with Azul Motorsports out here and I wish I would have remembered to tell you to bring your helmet. That would have been exciting. Uh, so anyhow, Chris, thank you so much for coming on the show today. And um, so what made you decide to get into uh, racing and motorsports and, and speed? Well, first of all, Jacqueline, thank you for having me here. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here and kind of share uh, what we do and what we're passionate about. So how it all started, honestly, was when I was a little kid, I've always been mechanically inclined into cars and anything that, that moved and whatnot. My dad's an engineer by, by education and trade, so got me into building models of engines, building models of cars and all those things. And, and as I progressed in age, it, it progressed in projects. So uh, in high school, I restored a car, nuts and bolts, stripped it down, restored oh, wow. it, everything. And in, in college, uh, my dad took me to Richard Petty Experience when I was 21, and I got to drive a NASCAR around a racetrack. It was an amazing experience. However, I feel the need for speed, and what happened there was they limit you to 140, 145 miles per hour. Now, that seems like a lot, but these remember, these cars are set to go 200 miles per yeah. hour. Yeah. So at 145 miles per hour, they almost drive themselves around the circles. Wow. So uh, after that, I decided, you know, this is really what I would like to pursue and keep doing. And uh, I want to do it on my own so that there's not as many limits or, or any as many regulations put on it. So, mm. so what I ended up doing is after I, I went out into the real world, so to speak, and started earning money, is uh, bought my first race car back in uh, 2006. So, oh about, wow, okay, about 10 years ago now, wow. and, and started down the path. Wow, that's awesome. No one knows this, but I remember about uh, 12 years ago because um, my parents were in racing and stuff. And uh, I just remembered when I made it big, I wanted to own my own racetrack. I really kind of forgot about that until just now. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, and, and that was one of the things I think that where we clicked, because I love speed and racing, and my driving record kind of reflects that a little bit, but um, <laughs> unfortunately. So, um, but yeah, so it's exciting. So now you have your own company, so you did move forward, accomplish that. Uh, so tell us about the two cars that you have, and uh, yeah, so tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So the two cars we currently have in our fleet is a 1990 Spec Miata race car and a brand new 2015 Chevrolet Corvette. So the reason why we chose those cars is one for the Spec Miata, it's a racing series within SCCA, so we race that in that series for winning prizes, monies, all those sorts of things, points and podiums. And uh, it's a fun car to drive, and if you do get into an incident, it's not as expensive to fix. Okay. And then the Corvette we got because it's an amazingly natural aspirated V8 engine. Mm -hmm. It looks great. The newer ones are, are fabulously well looking, and it drives great, and it's actually very comfortable to ride in as well for our uh, passengers that come with us. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did have a chance to sit in that. It was... Um... It was uh, great, actually. I didn't get a chance to drive it anywhere. <laughs> I just had to sit in it in a garage. <laughs> so maybe sometime soon. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. So, um, so that's exciting. So, um, and so now you do this full time, right? You have your business full time, and um, and so what are some of the experiences that you provide for people, and uh, that you know, how do they get a chance to you know take advantage of it as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, great question. So there are a couple things that, that we provide for people to do, especially with groups. So uh, a lot of our focus right now is on groups and companies that are looking to do team building events, looking for client entertainment, or to impress some pro prospects. Mm -hmm. Doing something a little bit different than golfing or, or what, yeah. what have you. It, it's a very different adrenaline pumping experience. Right. Something that will really stick in their brains and make them remember. 
Absolutely. And not only that, but it's, it's interesting. Some of our customers say that adrenaline wears off in two hours. Some customers say two days. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so depending on the person, it's it, uh, the experience lasts with you for quite a while. And it's it's a safe environment and, and how, the, how we go about doing it. And we also have specific days set up for the general public to sign up and, and come out and I, as, and as an individual. And of course, there's gift cards available if you want to get it for a loved one, say, mm -hmm. say a special uh, a present for a special time. Okay. Now, do people get to drive the car themselves or do they have, a, you know, a driver that's driving it and they get to ride along with it? Great question. So, originally when we started the business, the idea and premise was getting a ride around the racetrack with an experienced, licensed and certified driver. Mm -hmm. And there's been so much demand that where we've opened it up to having people being able to rent the cars. Uh, going through the driving school, it's, it's at least a one-day commitment, commitment, if not two-day commitment, where you can, can rent the car for one or two days, go out to the track, and get the experience with classroom and on-track driving experience with other cars in a safe environment with an instructor in there. Okay. But generally, how, how a lot of people start, uh, in either way, the start is okay, but the, uh, the ride-along is an eye-opening experience because you get to ride with someone who is certified and has been doing this for a while. And, right. it's, and it's amazing what cars are capable of. I mean, on the public streets, there's no way you can safely approach the limits of what these cars can do. Right. <laughs> Not even close. The streets aren't even designed for it anyway, so. You got it. You got yeah. it. So uh, a legitimate trace, racetrack with an experienced seasoned driver is an eye-opening and amazing experience. Mm, that's awesome. So so if you want to take advantage of one or the other, you definitely have that opportunity to do that. So if there is any car in the world that you could have and money was no option, it was like your ultimate dream car, what would it be? Street legal or race car, race car? Uh, well, let's do both. Why okay. not? Uh -huh. street legal. Let's start with street legal. Street legal. Honestly, the Corvette is a very, very good value and buy. So honestly, I'm, I have the car for the street and the track. It's a very capable car. It is very pleasant sounding and uh, it's a whole lot of fun to drive. Uh, maybe the only other one would be uh, one of the higher end uh, Porsche GT3s that mm. is three to four times the cost. That's Would that be legal, like a Carrera or is that... It's a, is that part of a, the Carrera or, or? It's like a, it's a GT3, so it's a, along the 911. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Body okay. style, but okay, okay, good, but up above. You got it. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Quite a few levels up, yeah. Yeah, the Porsche 911 was one of my favorite uh, cars. I was like, I always wanted like a white one that was convertible and just like they're just badass. That's that's all I can say <laughs> about yeah. those cars. So the GT3, I think I've seen those on the road. And um, no, that's that's a gorgeous car too. Which a lot of people don't know that um, Porsches were originally designed from Volkswagens, and their original they were not originally made as street vehicles. They were made for racing vehicles. That was their original origin on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. <laughs> I watched a documentary one time on Porsches, and that's where I learned that. And I think it was like over in Mexico or something like that is when they, I don't know, it could be, oops, it could be reaching or something. But I remember uh, years ago when I was looking for a job, and I was like thinking, look, because I love cars, and I would love to work in the service department. And I was like, man, I about begged them at the Porsche dealership <laughs> in Alpharetta to let me work there. Right. <laughs> but I didn't get the job. <laughs> so that's fine. Um, but anyhow, so... Tell us, okay, so you have that, and so um, uh, how would people like find out more about you and, yeah, and your absolutely. company? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> eventually what we'd like to do is get a, a race car race car, but that's a million dollars plus sometimes. So, okay. So okay. Getting, getting one of the uh, GT Le Mans type cars that mm -hmm. race at Le Mans in France uh, would be the pinnacle of, of the car that I would want to get. And how they get in contact with us, and, and, and the best way to reach us is through our website. Mm -hmm. It is Azul, A Z U L, mm -hmm. Motorsports, all one word, dot com. We're also on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. and Twitter. Okay. All under Azul Motorsports. There you go. You keep the brand consistent. So. Absolutely. So Azul means blue. It does, yes. And so why did you go with the color blue but in Spanish? Great question. So my wife is actually Brazilian, and when we're coming up with the name, we both like the word. We both our favorite color is blue. Mm -hmm. And when we looked on the internet, honestly, for Azul Motorsports, it wasn't taken anywhere. So awesome. we're like, game on. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Okay. So um, where would you like to see your company 
probably in the next, you know, if it could be anywhere in the next two years? Absolutely, and wonderful question. Right now we're concentrating in the Atlanta market with a fleet of two cars. Eventually how we would like to work it is travel a little bit more in the southeast to get to other tracks mm -hmm. and also include more vehicles in our lineup. Okay. That would be awesome. Yes, I agree. So you made, how long ago did you make the tr transition from corporate America to having your business, you know, full time? Almost two years ago now. Okay. So what made you decide and, and take that chance to make that jump? <laughs> to be completely honest, we're talking about starting a family here in a little while. Uh -huh. So if I didn't do it now, I'm not sure if I would after we started a family. Mm. So a lot of this is having no regrets and yeah. not wondering if you could or it, if you would be successful or not. So really driving through making this happen and uh, pursuing your passion while you can do it. That's awesome. That's exciting though. I mean, you went from being a little kid to having this dream to not being wanted to be limited to actually going out and doing it and doing something that you love and you're passionate about. Cause I'm sure you could spend hours underneath the car and it not even Absolutely. seem, and it just seemed like it was like limited time. And you're like, wow, it's that late already. Mm -hmm. you, you got know? it. Yeah. The wife does every once in a while come down to the garage and ask if I'm coming to bed and I ask, well, what time is it? She's like, Oh, it's 11 or midnight. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, okay. <laughs> I guess I am. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that means time over. So, uh -huh. um, one of my friends, he does, uh, he just likes to work around and make, on cars and he loves projects mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Not really necessarily racing, but like, projects and stuff. And he, he says he'll be up in it. I'm like, why did you only get like two hours of sleep last night? Mm -hmm. And he's single. So he's like, I was in my garage. I had to get it finished. Mm -hmm. I just had to get it finished. I was in my garage for like three o'clock this morning. <laughs> so. Yeah. A lot of times we, we, when we find a problem, we want to fix it. We don't stop until we get there. Yeah. Regardless of what pops up. So like most other things, when you're doing a car repair, it takes a lot longer than you think. Yeah. When you first get into it and there's unfore unforeseen circumstances that happen. Right. All the time. So you, so if you, if you ever had a mechanic, you wouldn't get mad at him if he finally said other things out <laughs> because you'd understand, <laughs> but I'm sure you do not, you work on all your own stuff and, and everything. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's great. So you guys are looking to start a family. That's awesome. Congratulations. Here later this year. Yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll start trying and see what happens, you know, <laughs> like God decide from there. So yeah, <laughs> that's exciting. So, mm -hmm. um, and you guys live here in Atlanta. So tell us a little bit about, um, you know, some of the experiences. So you have like the ride along and so yeah. forth. So how often do you offer like ride alongs where people can come out from, you know, the community and stuff like that and pay to come out and ride along with the car? Yeah. So the best way to check out what our schedule is on the individual ride along events to where you can go on to our online store is access through our website, azulmotorsports.com. Mm -hmm. you, click, you click on the online store tab. And then <laughs> uh, the first thing that you'll see is ride alongs and it has the dates and the racetracks we're going to be at. Okay. When you click on that, then there's an option for what time slot are open and what package you'd like to get. We have different levels ranging anywhere, uh, the MSRPs are anywhere from $199 all the way up to $2,999, depending on which level which you'd like to come in. Yeah. Okay, all right. I was about to say something I forgot. Um, so let me go back to you a little bit yeah, uh, in regards to like your business mm -hmm. and and so forth. Um, tell us the audience a little bit about your experience yeah. And because you didn't just race that one time and then all of a sudden have your company Correct. and uh, and be, you know, certified and stuff like that. So how, how did you end up getting from that point to where you're at now with your experience? Great question. And uh, I wish it was easy. Like most things in life, it's not. Right. <laughs> uh, so 10 years ago when I bought my first race car, started doing uh, what's called driver's education events, which is where we have 20 to 30 other cars on the track at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not considered racing because if it was, you won't be able to insure it like mm. we can. And so what this is, is there's 20 or 30 other cars on the track that play well together and you point for passing by. And so you start out at a entry level and generally there's three to five different levels depending on what club you go with. So there's multiple clubs, Porsche club, BMW club, just track it, Shin Motorsports, mm -hmm. among others. And in those clubs, as you progress, you, you start checking off boxes as far as, you know, capability to know where the flagging stations are and be familiar with the flags, playing well with others, mm -hmm. right, on the playground, so to speak. 
Oh, that's hard though. <laughs> Especially if you're really competitive. You're like, I just want to win. You got it. You <laughs> yeah. got it. So, uh, and then, so through the years, you progress through those, those ranks. And about two and a half years ago, I, I got invited to become an instructor and go through instructor candidate school. Mm. And uh, I passed the instructor candidate school. I've been instructing for a uh, little over uh, two, two and a half years now. And from there, um, went ahead and started establishing relationships with, with the organizations and whatnot to be able to provide, provide these experiences to the general public and, and groups if they wanted to come out and experience what it's like to be as close to racing as you can be without getting an actual license and right. buying the race car. Nice, nice. That's exciting. Who was it? Um, I don't know if you ever listened to Clark Howard, but he was talking about the other day um, about how they love to do like jet skiing and so forth. And they were like, he said him and his wife at one time were considering getting a jet ski. But then uh, then they thought about it and they were like, no, they'll just rent one every time they get it because they don't have to worry about insuring it, fixing it, cleaning it, all that stuff. So yeah. people get to have the opportunity to have that experience without having to have everything else that you love doing anyways, right? Right, without the huge capital outlay or the you know right. investment of your time to get through the process. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, because it's huge. Because I remember my dad built a go-kart for me uh, when I was a kid. Very cool. And uh, I actually rode it. Um, this was, I'm going to kind of reveal my age a little bit, because <laughs> it was a long time ago, my dad used to be um, a mechanic on the trucks uh, that drive out to the, uh, to the um, planes and stuff like that mm -hmm. at Fort Lauderdale International Airport. Cool. Which I think at that time was probably Fuller Airport. And I think this was like in the early something, whatever. I'm not going to give that away. <laughs> Anyhow, um, but I, I actually got to take it out on the airport. Wow. The yeah, the go-kart. And uh, it was crazy. My mom was with me. She rode it with me on there. But um, I was, was so excited. So I was probably like seven or eight years old. So my dad instilled that into me. Dang it, Dad! <laughs> Since I was a kid, and it's very ingrained in your brain. Uh, I mean, you you, when you, you have that experience. It right now. Uh -huh. You're like, ooh, I know. Mm -hmm. And then he built my mom a uh, dune buggy. So nice. yeah, he just built them all from scratch. So it was really cool. Um, well, this, your dad can be on my pit crew any day. Yeah, <laughs> he's 68 now, so he's he's no worries. He's uh, he'll just tell people what to do. <laughs> <laughs> that works too. <laughs> um. So, uh, if you can, I don't know if you want to pick one or whatever, but can you say, okay, so let me, let's answer it this way. Sure. Because uh, I was going to ask what your favorite track is, but let's not do that. So, how many tracks do you guys drive on? So, right now, we are working with Atlanta, or we're working with a organization called Just Track It on their tracks here in the Atlanta area, which is Atlanta Motorsports Park up mm -hmm. in Dawsonville. Okay. A 400 past the outlet malls, if people are right. familiar with that. And the other one is Road Atlanta, where, okay. they, where they have Petit Le Mans every year. So this is a world famous racetrack, uh -huh. and that's by Chateau Lawn up eighty five. Right. So those are the two tracks so in the Atlanta area. Two. So which one you probably say has like the smoothest track, and which one do you think probably handles your car the best? Hmm. It's kind of like picking your favorite child if you have I kids. I know. I know. So each of them have their unique. Uh, uniqueness about them. Road Atlanta has a great back straightaway where you can get up to pretty high speeds. Uh, that's a lot of fun in the Corvette. And uh, Atlanta Motorsports Park is a very technical track, so a lot of turns. Mm. And uh, one short straightaway, mm, I guess you could consider there, there's a few others, but really just one straightaway where the Miata just holds its own because it's a lot of turns. Mm. Okay. Oh, that. And I bet you the Miata handles really well around the turns. You got it. Uh, yeah. So yeah. so this isn't your normal Miata. So uh, people, it is still the exterior shell is a Miata. Right. But granted, if you go on my website and you, you check out the pictures, there's, it's decaled up, so it doesn't look necessarily like your normal road-going car. And then if you actually look on the inside, it looks more like an airplane cockpit than a normal right. car. Right. With switches and gauges and a removable steering wheel. So half the time, well, when you're not in the car, the steering wheel is not there, so you're like, Where's the steering wheel? Right. It's removable so you can get in and out to, to get over the cage. So it has a full roll cage in it as well for safety. And uh, in order to have easy uh, access to the driver's seat, you have to remove the steering wheel. Mm. So with that being said, there's also other equipment in there that you might not be visible to plain eye, such as a racing suspension, uh, our compound tires, 
and racing brakes that make the capabilities of the car much, much greater than the road going version. Okay, okay. And it's a standard. Right? It is, yes. So the Miata is a manual transmission, and the Corvette is one of the new uh, paddle the shifters. Paddle shifters, right. Mm -hmm. So it's an automatic with paddle shifters, pretty much. You got it, more or yeah. less. And all. Triptonic, triptonic, or whatever it's called. And all new race cars are more or less automatics. Uh, even the Porsche GT3 that I was alluding mm. to, they don't offer it in manual anymore because in pure race cars, it's much faster than any human can be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean the automatic is? It or, is oh, correct. yeah. And in my, um, my uh, Mini Cooper that I have has the paddle shifters. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that it, between that and like using, because I can use my, uh, automatic whatever stick so I can put it into manual drive um, but it, it's much easier on the steering wheel and it's just, especially if I'm going around if I'm trying to catch a light and I'm going around the corner kind of quickly and I want to downshift quickly you got yeah, it. so I can make it around safely <laughs> and, and you're right it is much safer when you leave yeah. your hands on the steering wheel it's much safer than having to you know move your left foot to the clutch and then one hand on to the gear lever so yeah it is much safer Good yeah point. So that's awesome. So, um, and so what about the, uh, so the Corvette's more of an automatic, but mm -hmm. so the Mi Miata, Mini, oh my God, I'm trying the to say Mini. Miata. Yeah. And Spec Miata. Uh -huh. That is an actual standard shift gear with the clutch and all that stuff. I have to be honest with you, when it comes to like, even though it, a manual, like the manual with the gear shifters or whatever is much faster because than any human can actually be. It is so much fun to have the standard and actually shift it and put your clutch down and all that kind of stuff. That That's exciting. Absolutely. I'd, I'd have to admit that there is more skill involved in driving manual transmission, especially when you're decelerating mm -hmm. and you do what's called heel and toe, where you're downshifting and braking at the same time. You right. have to rev match when you're downshifting so that you don't upset the balance of the car and maybe spin out or something. Oh, so yeah. there is a lot more skill involved. And it's just so much more, oh my gosh, it's just thrilling. Like I've had so many cars that were uh, stick shift and they were just some of my favorites. So so it looks like we're about out of time. So I just wanted to um, let our audience know one last time how they can find out more about you and how they can uh, get booked to uh, ride on your uh, in your cars. Yeah, absolutely. So Chris Gray Lunas with Azul Motorsports. You can check us out online at Azul, A-Z-U-L, motorsports.com. And uh, go to the online store that has where you can actually pick up one of our packages from the uh, from the website there. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Chris, for coming on the show today on uh, Connecting Atlanta Radio uh, on the number one online radio hit station in Atlanta or in the United States, really, the fastest growing world star hit radio.com. But every, uh, just don't forget to check out ConnectingAtlanta.net because twice a month we have a complimentary workshop around business education. And uh, we have a workshop coming up. It's a five-hour workshop coming up on April 30th. Uh, it's only $97. You can actually bring a friend and you'll learn about marketing, sales, and finance. And we all have a CPA, a gentleman that used to work with uh, Bell South, and he was a VP of sales. And then also... Um, marketing master Marquel, who is one of our previous shows. Thank you all again for coming out. We really appreciate it. Uh, Connecting Atlanta Radio on the number one fastest growing internet radio station, WorldStarHitRadio.com. And I hope you all have a great evening. The hottest music, R and B, hip hop, pop. I still get reggae, EDM, indie, old school. Side, side. <laughs> Check it. And sports talk right here. WorldStarHitRadio.com.